That was Dreamscapes by Herman Mehari, the France-based American jazz trumpeter, recently released his second record called A Change for the Dreamlike, recorded in the French countryside during the first lockdown. Now, we're currently in the second lockdown here in France, so Herman joins me virtually. Uh, congratulations on your new album. Before we talk about it, I wanted to ask you, how has this second lockdown affected your musical projects and is it any different from the first one? Yeah, it's um, it's affected me in a different way. I, I kind of had a lot of motivation during the first one, um, obviously, as you've <laughs> seen the product of that. Um, and I kind of, at a certain point, was losing some motivation and inspiration. And uh, um, in, this, in, this, in, in this case, I decided just I needed to go to a different place and just find motivation and inspiration. So this is uh, your second album, A Change for the Dreamlike. Uh, it's a beautiful album. I definitely recommend it. I've been listening to it for days now. And you've said that it's more personal than your debut record, Bleu, which was released in 2017. You've, you've actually described this new record as a series of personal journal entries, as a modern mixtape of dreams, which I find fascinating. What do you mean by that? Well, it's uh, when I talk about dreams, I'm... Um, um, I'm really speaking of, of, of dreams, like not just like your nocturnal dreams, but dreams uh, that you, you wish for, things you want, um, um, personal things that might kind of blur the line between what's real and what's not, uh, memories, all these things that kind of mean dreams. And uh, this, this album kind of explores those, those things uh, uh, in my life, in, in terms of my growing up in Missouri, for instance, or... Uh, my ear train heritage, um, all these things. Well, let's actually listen to another track off your album. This is a song, it's called A Conversation with My Uncle. Check it out. Can you imagine as kids, 20 at the most, 18, 19, getting imprisoned, going to jail? They take a picture of you, front and side, and so, like a criminal. It was so bad that they could have arrested him anytime for no apparent reason. So I managed to get out of the Hitler. So that was a conversation with my uncle off uh, Herman Mahari's sophomore album, A Change for the Dreamlike. I love this song. There's a strong personal connection in, in this track. Uh, you're, you're playing along to a story that your uncle told you about your father. Can you tell us more about it? Yeah, um, I've, I've always wanted to share, uh, not really share, but like re just record my dad's story and from him. Um, but I lost him a few years ago and I always regretted that I'd never recorded it. So I had my uncle do it. Um, and it's, 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 he's such a great storyteller and, and it's such a important just story of the, the refugee story in general. And uh, so I, I did this while I was during, in the first, first confinement. And, and we, re we recorded that, his voice. And then I, uh, when I heard how melodic it was, I decided to, to interact with it in this, in this way, with the trumpet. It's such a beautiful song. Uh, and, and, and what I find interesting is how your personal history really comes out in it. Now, what's interesting is you've actually been living here in France for a couple of years now. What drew you to the Paris jazz scene? Um, I had been coming for a while uh, before, I, before I moved to Paris. And... Uh, um, I found it so rich uh, and really deep. Uh, there's so many musicians and there's so much support for the music here, there rather. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's beautiful to be in a place where the music is really appreciated and loved. And you mentioned that you grew up in, in Missouri. Uh, you studied there as well. Does the Midwest, does it continue to influence your music today? I think it does. Uh, you know, I, I reflect a lot on what it means to be from the, like from the Midwest in a musical sense, and I find that the artists that I really enjoy that come from the Midwest have this very soulful, very earthly character to their music. It's less heady. It's it's and and I and I and I try to bring that out in my music as well. 
And and you continue actually to collaborate with musicians from back home, like on the track on the album. Uh, it's called "I Cry for Our People." It's a very powerful piece that you've described as an elegy for the African diaspora, uh, the Black diaspora across the world. You uh, work with a, a musician on this track, Ryan J. Lee, who actually has family ties to an um, unarmed Black man who was shot by the Kansas City Police uh, in 2013. Did the Recent Black Lives Matter uh, protests that we saw in the U.S., did that inspire you for this track? Yeah, it was actually happening around the same time um, uh, as I was, I mean, it's been happening for a while, of course, but um, it absolutely was on my mind. And, um, and having such a close friend of mine, Ryan, uh, affected by, by this murder, um, it really touched me too, of course. Um, yeah, uh, of course, Black Lives Matter was, was definitely in my mind. It's a, it's a beautiful track, lots of energy uh, in that track. Now, you recorded this album during the first lockdown, uh, so there were stay-at-home orders here in the French con in France. You were in the countryside. Uh, you, interestingly, you collaborated with a lot of other musicians for uh, this album, but everyone recorded separately in isolation. For someone like yourself, who's, who's used to working with others, for playing with others, what was this solo experience like? It was, um, it was interesting. It's very introspective, um, which was, I think comes out in the music. There's a very introspective quality to it. Um, and I don't know, it was, for me, at first, the idea was to do it myself, and then eventually it came to me that I, I, need, to, I need to bring in my people with me. And, and, and I heard certain people on certain musics, uh, certain songs, rather, and, and they, they, perfect, they, they, they fit it perfectly. They, I, they, they fit my vision perfectly. Well, it's a beautiful collective effort on this on this uh, solo album uh, of yours. It's a, it's a definitely recommend listening to it. We're going to move on to some other uh, music news that's making headlines right now. And the American Music Awards, which took place in Los Angeles with COVID-19 protocol, but still featured live performances, in-person presenters, and even a small audience. Now, the weekend dominated with multiple wins, including Favorite Soul and R&B Male Artist and Favorite Soul and R&B Album for After Hours. But it was Taylor Swift who won the top prize of the night, Artist of the Year. She was unable to accept the award in person, however, because she's busy re-recording her early music catalog, this in the wake of an ugly legal battle over the sale of her masters. Next, French R&B queen Aya Nakamura's hotly anticipated third album, Aya, released mid-November, is already breaking records. With catchy hits like Julie Nana, it's been streamed over 12 million times on Spotify, making it the third most listened to album in the world right now. The 25-year-old Malian board singer is hoping to continue in the success of her previous album, Nakamura, which sold over a million copies. Its mega hit, Ja Ja, got over 700 million views on YouTube, made Madonna and Rihanna dance, and catapulted her to the status of one of the most popular French singers in the world. Here's a track off her new album, it's called Doudou. <laughs> That was Aya Nakamura there. Uh, Herman, I've got a question for you. Uh, you're a jazz musician. Um, did you listen to jazz growing up, or have you drawn inspiration from other genres as well? 
I, I listened to a lot of jazz growing up, um, but I, I, I really listen to as much other music as I do jazz now. Um, I, I, there was a period of my life where I only listened to jazz when I was really deep in studying it. But then I, at a certain point, I listened to everything but jazz after that. And <laughs> now it's a mix. But I love all kinds of music, and I try to, I try to be involved with other music as well. Well, maybe you'll like Miley Cyrus and her new album uh, that she's releasing. It's called Plastic Hearts. Uh, she says the record was actually informed by losing her home in a 2018 California wildfire, which also erased a lot of new music material that was supposed to be on this album. She says, nature did what I now see as a favor and destroyed what I couldn't let go of myself. I lost my house in a fire, but found myself in the ashes. The album features her recent single, Midnight Sky, with a self-directed video, and we're going to leave you with that track. But before we go, I want to thank my guest, Herman Mehari. Be sure to check out his album, A Change for the Dreamlike. Thank you so much for being with us today. For more arts and culture news, head to our website and stay in touch on social media. Stay tuned for 24. More news is coming up right after this.